Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to the RECA Residential Property Manager Industry Council online engagement session. Uh, it's one of many opportunities stakeholders will have to engage with the Industry Council moving forward. Uh, my name is Brian Dewey. I'm the Communications and Connections Manager here at RECA, and I will be the host of the engagement session today. Um, before I pass things off to the Industry Council Chair, I just want to briefly cover how the session will unfold. Uh, first, the chair will go through a brief presentation outlining the Industry Council, uh, its activities and its priorities going forward, uh, and this will be followed by a question and answer session. If you have a question for the Industry Council, you can ask it at any time using the Q&A window. Uh, you'll see the button um, to open the window at the bottom menu of your screen in Zoom. Uh, if you have Zoom in full screen mode, you may have to use your cursor to the top of the screen and uh, make the menu pop down. Uh, when the presentation is concluded, I will ask the Industry Council Chair your questions. Uh, please note, uh, this is a curated Q&A session. If you have a question that falls under the jurisdiction of another Industry Council or the Board of Directors, uh, please save that question for the next online engagement session for that Industry Council, or you can send your question to that particular body's email address, uh, which can be found on Rika's website. If your question falls under the jurisdiction of the Board or the Residential Real Estate Broker, Industry Council, those bodies have already had online sessions and you can view those recordings on Rika's website uh, as your question may have been answered in those sessions. Please also note that I may not read your, your question word for word. Uh, if there's more than one question relating to a particular topic, I will ask a question related to the theme of those questions um, instead of asking each question individually. And if your question contains unprofessional language or contains defamatory language or misinformation, uh, please note that that question will not be read. Uh, one final thing I'd like to cover is the difference between property management and condominium management. Uh, based on some feedback in the lead up to this meeting, uh, we've noticed there's still some confusion um, in some areas. Uh, so when we refer to property management, we're talking about providing services to landlords and tenants and leasing properties. Uh, and when we refer to condominium management, we're referring to services a condo manager would provide a condominium board after entering a client relationship with that board. Uh, property management has always been regulated by RECA and condominium management will become fully regulated by RECA on December 1st, 2021. Uh, there are different types of businesses, though some companies may offer both services. Uh, now, with that housekeeping out of the way, and without further ado, I will pass things off to Don Newell, the Chair of the Residential Property Manager, Manager Industry Council. Welcome, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Brian, and welcome, everybody. I'm looking forward to this opportunity to engage with the members uh, in the business of uh, either, as Brian said, residential property management or condominium management. Uh, my name is Don Newell. I am the chair of the uh, council and have been since December 1st of last year, which is when we were first constituted. I'm a chartered professional accountant by background, so I'm not a member of the profession, uh, the real estate profession, but I've worked with real estate for most of my career uh, in one way, shape or form and have uh, really enjoyed so far the ability to be able to use my background in uh, this new uh, format that we have. So with that, I'll just do a bit of an overview of what we're gonna talk about in the presentation part of today. There's a few things that to keep in mind, we'll just give you some of the background here. Then I'll ask our industry council members to do a little self-introduction of themselves. Talk a bit about the Real Estate Amendment Act and how we came to be and what our role is as, uh, as industry councils. And as Brian's mentioned, there are more than one of us uh, because we are now uh, uh, allocated amongst the various aspects of real estate in Alberta. Give you an update on what we've been doing since December 1st, and it's been qu quite busy and what some of our priorities are, immediate and longer term. So that uh, hopefully will give you a bit of the background that we would uh, want you to have in order to be able to ask whatever questions you would like to, to ask us. So things to keep in mind. Um, we're here because the need was identified as part of the evolution of uh, real estate in Alberta to have a different format uh, for our governance, as well as to identify which uh, licensees should be part of the of what the Real Estate Act requires to be licensed. And as Brian's mentioned, condominium managers are coming into the, the fold 
uh, effective of December 1st of 2021. And we know that there are a number of questions from condominium managers about what does that mean? Uh, a little bit of the fear of the unknown. So that's one of the reasons that we're having sessions like this and we intend to have more of them. So RECA, or the Real Estate Council of Alberta, is in the in its role has a public protection mandate. So that means that what we do as part of both the RECA board and the, the four councils is concern ourselves with matters of public interest and protection of that public interest. RECA is not a trade organization. It's not a membership group. And there are a, a number of associations in the real estate world in Alberta that do represent the the members of, of uh, that association, whereas RICA is responsible for all of the stakeholders in Alberta in terms of the, its public protection model. So with the uh, fact that those associations exist, if there are things that need uh, to be advocated for with government or others, that is the better avenue for uh, individual members to raise their issues. Whereas what we want to hear is from the regul regulatory perspective and the licensing perspective, what are the issues that you have that we might be able to, to do, uh, do better or do, do differently uh, to make sure that we are both performing our role, but also acting in a, in a responsible manner with you as, as the regulated and, and licensed people. So the Residential Property Manager Industry Council is made up of five members. Um, we have two public members that have been appointed by Ministry of Service Alberta. I am one of those. And then we have three who are actually in the business of residential property management, condominium management. So I'm going to ask each of our members to just do a little bit of self-introduction. So Carrie. Good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Carrie Platt. I have been in condo management for just over 10 years. Uh, prior to the RECA elections in November, I was a member of the CCI Alberta North Board of Directors and um, from 2019 until I was elected onto the Industry Council. Uh, prior to that, I also volunteered on the Education Committee for CCI. I participated in the project team for the divestment of education with Service Alberta this past summer. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to be elected as an industry council member uh, representing condominium management. And uh, this industry council uh, gave me the honor of being appointed to the RECA board as well. Um, just a little bit on my uh, management background, I worked for uh, two different um, uh, brokerages as a uh, property manager. I was licensed in property management. Uh, but worked pretty much exclusively in condo management for the 10 years. And uh, in August of 2020, I opened up my own condominium management firm with a partner. And I currently manage a smaller portfolio of condos uh, at the same time running my management company. And I am so looking forward to seeing condominium management licensing um, come to its full fruition. Um, it's been a long time coming and we're working hard to make sure that it goes well. Thank you, Carrie Cyril. Okay, thanks, Don. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Cyril Pratt, and uh, like Don, I'm the other um, appointed public member on this industry council. Um, I'm from Calgary originally, and um, outside of uh, what I'm doing now with the RECA board, I actually work, I work for the Calgary Police Service as a sergeant for the last 23 years. Um, before that, I worked as a member with the RCMP for about three years, so uh, policing and uh, law is my, is my background. Um, in the past, I've been a board member and a chair of condo boards here in the city, and I've worked very closely with property management uh, uh, companies along the way. I'm uh, very excited to be in this new role and looking forward to the challenges that it may, it may present, and um, also looking to working with all of you collaboratively moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, Cyril. Don. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Don Brown. I'm uh, co-founder and managing partner of uh, Core Real Estate Group. Uh, we've been in business since uh, spring of 2011, so we just hit our 10th anniversary uh, about a month ago. 
Um, my background is, has been strong in business for years. I've, uh, since I was about 25 years old, I've been in business for myself and various businesses. I've gone through uh, deregulation and self-regulation in two different industries, the, the trucking industry uh, in the early 80s and, uh, and then the outfitter uh, industry in Saskatchewan in, uh, in the early 2000s. Um, and so I'm a high proponent or strong proponent of proper licensing. And I've always been, since I've got involved in condominiums, a, a proponent that condo managers should be licensed separately. So when the opportunity to, uh, to join the, the industry council came up, I jumped right on it and was lucky enough to be elected and, and have really enjoyed my time on the council so far. It's been a lot of work, but it's been a, a very fulfilling role. Uh, second to that is, is I also serve on the CMAC, the uh, uh, Condo Manager uh, Advisory Committee, uh, to help go through the licensing and through the uh, education component and that sort of thing. And we're making some really good strides on that. So I'm excited to, to see that come through to fruition. So thanks all for attending. And we look forward to trying to answer all of your questions that you have today. And more important, uh, to get feedback from the industry uh, so that we can move forward in a, in a manner that helps everybody. So thanks very much for attending. Thanks, Don. And Keith. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Keith McMullen. I've been in property management for over 30 years, uh, managing properties uh, from coast to coast and the U.S. Um, I've been employed with three national companies and I have my own company that I've had for about 12 years. Uh, I was licensed when I moved here in around 2003. And I think licensing is very important for the industry to keep um, the public um, protected. And it's very important for standards. And um, prior to that, I also was the six, president for six years for the Calgary Apartment Association which was the main lobby group for changing landlord tenant matters, et cetera. And we look forward to bringing property managers into uh, the fold. All right, thanks Keith. So ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, that is our council and our council of, of five members is in similar makeup to the other uh, four other councils, which are for residential real estate, commercial real estate and mortgage brokers. And we are all volunteers in this role, um, but we are ably supported by a strong management team at RECA. And they, they have been extremely helpful in both in bringing us into uh, the, the new governance structure, but also to understand the, the business of RECA. So what is the role of the Industry Council? Well, we are uh, covering, oh, sorry, Real Estate Amendment Act first. Uh, where we come from is the Real Estate Amendment Act of 2020, which is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, brought us into effect on December the 1st of 2020. It was decided um, sometime before us that the uh, previous governance structure, which had been around since 1996, was probably one which needed to be shaken up, and the in part because the businesses uh, of real estate in Alberta had changed significantly over that time frame, And as each of the members has said, the, this concept of licensing is quite important because it means that from the public protection perspective, as well as from the individuals performing the real estate activities in Alberta, they have met a certain standard. And it was decided that with the these four um, councils that those standards would be set for the, the licensees that each of those councils is going to be responsible for licensing and, and monitoring. So we had some elections and again, similar to our council, the other councils identified individuals who had the appropriate skills and background to be able to, uh, to do that standard setting and, and management of, of the, uh, the standards once they were established. So the next slide, Brian. So then the industry councils have, uh, again, similar to uh, ours, have a, a responsibility to set the licensing requirements. And in order to uh, obtain a license, there would 
usually be an educational component in advance of that, but I'll talk a little bit more about the concept of challenging an exam because uh, some of some in some cases that may be the uh, the, the route to to licensing. The uh, standards of practice would then also be put in place because if we're going to have a monitoring process, there needs to be something to measure against. And so part of our role is to enforce those standards of practice. Again, I mentioned the, the management team at RECA. There is a group that can perform inspections, uh, can help assist each of the councils to ensure that those standards of practice are being, being met. And our registrar is overall responsible for identifying uh, situations that need to be brought to the industry council for consideration as to whether there needs to be some action taken. And we have already had to take actions in a couple of cases where individuals were operating in breach of the, the act. And in those cases, the, the uh, registrar did um, move forward with some, some enforcement action. So in our short lifespan of, uh, of five months, we've, we've already had to deal with a few of those, those, those types of activities. What else have we been up to? Well, we started off with an onboarding process. Uh, all of the councils went through onboarding to get a, a sense of what these responsibilities were, um, to go through the act and the regulations to the act. We went through some multi-day mandatory governance training. It was decided as part of setting up this new governance structure that we should all have the same basis of understanding what our governance responsibilities were and how we should uh, conduct ourselves once we had formed the councils. We've kicked off our stakeholder engagement processes and this is an example of it. It's uh, only one, as Brian mentioned, we've set up emails for the, each of the councils. So to the extent that there needs to be some direct communication with us, there's an avenue for that. Obviously there's RECA staff that can be reached out to if there's questions or concerns. And we have regular meetings of the councils and at those meetings, which have been, the agendas have been pretty full up to now. Every meeting we've had has taken the, the full allotted time and sometimes a little bit more. Um, because we, ha we have to make sure that we are dealing with the things that need to be dealt with immediately. And then we also need to keep our eyes open around what are some of the longer term issues that, that we'll want to tackle as part of our, uh, I'll call it our more strategic plan. The other big issue uh, that we've been uh, giving a lot of thought to, uh, and Don mentioned a, a condominium management um, advisory council that, that we've had the benefit of working with as part of getting uh, ready for bringing condo managers on board is education divestment. So historically, RECA has provided the educational component that is in advance of uh, obtaining a license. Under the new act, we are required to divest ourselves of that education component to third parties and that we would then uh, look to those third parties to provide that education in advance, again, of, of somebody writing an exam, which will continue to be uh, managed by RECA at, in advance of getting your licenses. So with condo managers still so having to come on board for December 1st, 2021, we are working uh, hard to get that uh, education plan built and out to some proposed or potential education providers in sufficient time that people that uh, want to start working with uh, towards their condo management license, they can add to uh, their knowledge. And many of you would have knowledge already because you're already obviously in the business, but in order to be able to obtain the license, uh, some, or some of uh, people coming into this new will, will require education and we want to make sure that the program for education is is fulsome uh, covers all the aspects of of condominium management um, and meets the the public interest requirement that uh, we had I had talked about earlier so that is a, a big part of what we have to do um, between now and December 1st 2021 for uh, for condo management next slide Brian 
So the Condominium Manager Implementation Advisory Committee, or CMAC as Don referred to it, has actually been around before we were. Uh, so it, it's been in place for quite some time and it has very broad membership of people in condominium management. So we're really lucky and, and pleased that we have the ability to work with CMAC in helping us get ready for condo licensing and condo education. So uh, we have extended their um, responsibilities right through to December 1st. And uh, Don will attest that they have had some very long and involved meetings going through these competencies and the, the uh, educational requirements. And uh, the advantage of that is that because they're all in the business, they are actually providing huge value in terms of the, the uh, development of this process. So we're, we're happy that they're there and uh, we expect that the, the value of um, the uh, actual product when it comes out will be one that uh, all condo managers will, will appreciate. We also provided the board with what our view of the strategic priorities, both of our council and of the board should be. Uh, what are some of the key risks that we as the council and Rika as the board face? And we, we, Rika is also in the process of identifying who its CEO is going to be. So we talked a bit about what we thought some of the attributes of a, of a new CEO of this organization in its revised governance structure should, uh, should look like. I mentioned earlier, we've been working on the condominium manager standards of practice and our registrar has been providing us a, a regular update on regulatory activity across, the, um, across all of the councils, but including, including our own. Next slide, Brian. So we have some immediate priorities. I've talked about the first one uh, because it's, it's uh, time sensitive for December 1st of this year. The uh, education framework and the learning outcomes. So we are getting, closing in on that. We um, haven't finalized all of these matters yet because as I said, we've only been in, in business for five months but we know we need to get them done. And so that's why it's on our immediate priorities list. I referred earlier to this concept of being able to challenge the exams where we need to build a process around that and what um, the eligibility to be able to challenge those exams would, might, will, will look like. And we'll communicate that once we've uh, got it nailed down. We are consulting with the board on the election bylaws. So we initially all started as uh, has been mentioned by, by elections that took place last fall. Um, and we are all at the present time anyway, having serving the same term, which is a three year term. So one of the things that we're looking at trying to figure out is how we can manage to get some uh, staggering of terms so that we don't all come due at the same time. So that'll be part of this bylaws review process. We want to continue with our stakeholder engagement and make sure that we are listening because that is a big part of our role as the council is to understand what the issues are that you as members in the, in the profession face uh, at the same time as, as meeting our public interest uh, mandate. And we're gonna start with our outreach to education providers very shortly, because as I said, we have to divest ourselves of the educational process. Next slide, Brian. So Brian mentioned that there were, uh, have already been some uh, of these engagement sessions. There are a couple of, more of them coming up for the other councils. So to the extent that some of you are in multiple aspects of the real estate business, if you have issues that relate to those other industry councils, you're more than welcome to join those engagement sessions as well. Or as Brian has said, if it's with respect to some of this uh, council meeting, council engagement sessions that have already been held, but you still have questions and you weren't able to attend, you can either review the uh, session that was held by going to the RICO website, or you can send uh, an email to that, to that council. So that's a, a very brief overview of what we've been doing. Uh, as I said, we've had full, full meetings and uh, uh, are trying to deal with multiple issues all at the same time in, the, in, the, in a relatively short space of time. And I, I really appreciate the input from our council members, as well as the support from the management team. Next 
So that's what we've been up to. Um, I think I will turn it back now then to Brian to see if we get some questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, we have some questions. Um, I'll start off with um, this first one. Someone is uh, saying that hiring is very difficult um, in the industry right now, or trying to find people who have enough experience. Um, what is being done to increase the talent pool for licensed residential property management? Okay, um, Don, would you like to take, tackle that one? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair, happy to, uh, to weigh in on this. Uh, um, this is an excellent question, and, and um, I'm not sure who asked it, but you're certainly not alone in trying to hire and, and retain good staff. It's, uh, one of the goals is to try to increase the professionalism in the property management end of the real estate industry. Uh, to that extent, we're hoping that when, the, when we get the education done and the course providers uh, set up that the education may bring a higher profile into, the, uh, into this end of the industry. Um, one of the things that, that as an industry council, we're always open to other suggestions as well. So I'd, I'd like to remind everybody that RECA's role is, is not to attract people to the industry. We're more of a, a protect the public type of role. But as an industry council, if you have suggestions on that, we're more than happy to hear it and would welcome any suggestions, any feedback or that sort of thing. And we're hoping that, that by increasing the professionalism, we can make the property management side of it more of a professional uh, image and a professional uh, field as opposed to a job or a, a, a stopgap measure for some people. So I hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, um, there was a discussion about having graduated licensing, um, which would allow someone to perform some property management related tasks under the supervision of a broker while they were getting their education done. Uh, what, what, where does that stand? Where does graduated licensing stand? Carrie, would you like to try, try that one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, so um, the Industry Council uh, will be examining this issue. Uh, we are of the understanding that the previous council had done some consultation in the industry regarding uh, this, and we will be reviewing that consultation. Um, so one of the larger issues is um, prior to um, these changes, um, the education format was such that if you wanted to be in property management, you had to take both con or commercial and residential uh, management, which made for a little bit longer course. Um, and uh, now with the new model, commercial and residential have been separated out into separate industry councils. So any future education as it moves forward, um, from our industry council will only cover the residential component of property management. Um, so it can, could potentially lead to a shorter uh, path for licensing. Um, but we have to remember with RECA, our mandate is consumer protection. And so, you know, that is first and foremost, and we won't be sacrificing uh, the consumer protection aspect just to have a shortened um, education process. So um, we really need to ensure that all licensees are fully competent um, in what they do. And um, yeah, but this is, uh, we will be looking at this one moving forward and we'll figure out what's best for the industry. Great, thank you, Carrie. Uh, next question. Um, this person is saying that uh, really landlord or sorry, property managers are um, a small subset of the rental market where a market that's dominated by uh, private landlords and large institutions. Um, they're wondering how does RECA recognize this unique position of property management brokerages when making policies compared to like a, let's say the, the residential real estate broker side of things where the vast majority of deals are using those real estate licensees. They're saying in property management, the market is really not that heavy with third party property managers. So is RECA taking that into consideration when making policy? 
Yeah, Keith, that sounds like a good one for you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe that um, property management licensees are not in competition. The fact of the matter is it's a uh, value added, being able to protect the public and you need to market that way in the sense that, I um, mean, I have a company too that we market and it certainly adds value for operations and accounting, um, all financial matters because one, we're audited and we're licensed. So that's a comfort level and it helps with insurance to it's comfort to the owners. So that's the way it must be um, marketed. Simple as that. I mean, yes, we certainly recognize the fact that um, institutions don't need to have license because they own the property. So this is a unique situation that you have to market and add value. Great, thank you. Um, so this next one has to do with the licensing structure for, for condominium management versus property management. Um, currently, if you're a broker who does property management, you must also be licensed in the other areas, residential, commercial, uh, rural, in order to operate the brokerage. Um, is, you know, since property managers and condo managers are part of the same council now, is there a plan to revise this licensing structure so property managers and condo managers would, you know, would have a similar rule? Yeah, it's, we, we know this is an issue. Um, when the councils were set up, we also know that there were some overlaps that uh, we are still trying to work our way through. And so this one's on our list. Uh, we haven't got an answer yet, but we are uh, certainly aware of it. And once we've been able to work with the other industry councils and the board and figure out what, uh, what the best way to, to deal with this is, we, we will put out our advisory and make, uh, make sure that everybody's aware of how, how we think we can manage this one. Great, thank you. Uh, next question has to do with e and insurance. Uh, it's uh, how will it work for condo managers? Um, they say real estate licensees have access to REX um, and their premiums seem very low compared to what uh, a condo manager can get. Well, um, condo managers will be required to have E&O insurance. We, we actually talked about this at one of our recent discussed meetings and discussed how that might work. Uh, unfortunately, REX is for uh, trades in real estate and won't cover condo managers. So this is uh, an area where perhaps uh, one of the associations or a group of associations might decide to work with insurance and insurance company or more than one insurance company to see if there is an opportunity for condo managers to have some uh, benefit of scale in terms of getting their e and insurance. But that's not uh, something that, that RECA can actually deal with. I think this is a, an industry issue. Great, thanks. Um, so this next one um, might answer a lot of people's questions and you covered it a bit in the presentation, um, but when, when will the condo education be available? Um, Cyril, do you wanna try this one? Sure, Mr. Chair, thanks for that. Uh, I have a very popular question and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, discussions around this topic, but um, we're, we're certainly diligent and working right now to have it in place by the 1st of December, 2021. That's the, uh, the plan. We've uh, consulted so far on the competencies and we should have them in place shortly. Um, with having those competencies, we can then set the learner outcomes and uh, the educational requirements for our sector. Um, with those in place, um, third-party providers can then apply and uh, offer the courses to our licensees. Um, all of this, of course, will require um, a great deal of preparation and uh, immense collaboration and approval, of course, from the Minister of Service Alberta. Um, it, can't be, it can't be stressed enough, though, that um, this is our highest priority and it's uh, in the forefront in the eyes of our council and the board. Great, thank you. Uh, so another question uh, that might answer a few of them um, is uh, basically what are the fees gonna be, uh, particularly for condo management? Uh, so one, many of these people will be new to licensing with RECA and may not have a, a, con you know, a concept of, of what the fees would be. 
Good question. Um, the uh, the board, Rika board, is currently in the budget process, so we don't actually have a specific number just yet. But once we do have it, um, obviously we'll communicate it to all licensees because uh, it applies not just to condo managers but to uh, through, across all the councils. The intent is that the fees should be the same across uh, every sector. So uh, right now, um, you can look online at the RICO website and see that the fees currently are $475 for a new individual and $450 for a new brokerage and a $300 application fee for uh, brokerages, review fee. Those fees haven't changed very much over the past 10 years and, and I wouldn't expect them to change very much for this year. Great, thanks. Um, now we're getting into um, how we're going to license condo managers really. Um, and the question is how will condo managers with less than two years experience continue to practice if courses are not available prior to December 1st? Uh, yeah, okay, Keith, you wanna? Sure, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, we recognize the importance of this specifically as we are being mandated by a date. This is a process at which, again, we're working diligently through the RECA staff and committees and CMAC um, for competency and eligibility. Once that is set, we will send out to consult to the industry and please everybody in the industry, we need your feedback and very quickly so that we can proceed and meet the guidelines. Thank you. Uh, and then on along a similar vein, someone is asking, can we challenge exams? Um, Don? Uh, sure, I can handle that one, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, as part of the, uh, the CBAC committee, uh, it's always been our goal to have a challenge available. Uh, we're in the final steps of setting up the eligibility and uh, what the challenge will look like. Um, our goal is to have it available, you know, in advance, so that uh, everybody can uh, can get their transitional license and then do their challenge right away. Um, the uh, the biggest thing is that uh, as soon as we have a pr pr proposed resolution available, we'll get it out to everybody, uh, and then we want the industry consultation. As Keith had just mentioned, if you have suggestions, concerns. Please get them to us. Uh, perhaps Brian at the end of the, the, the presentation can put the email up again just for everybody. But um, we do want to hear back from the industry and we will. Our goal is to try and get it done uh, as quickly as possible and get it out to the industry as quickly as possible as well. Great, thanks. Um, I think we'll have uh, a few people um, get their answers with this next one. Um, it has to do with exemptions. People people know that um, you know certain certain areas are exempt from being licensed in uh, in, in other sectors. Um, they want to know if uh, you know administration staff that work for them will be exempted from needing a license, or you know since they take part in the business in condo management, or accounting staff or someone who works for their condo management company, will they be exempt? Carrie. So the intent of the act is if you are um, helping other people lease a property or you're helping a board um, manage their, their um, condominium, you're, you require a license. But if you are managing your own property or you're a board member in a self-managed board, you would not require a license. Um, that being said, Service Alberta and the minister are still working on the exemption regulations um, and those are not finalized yet. We do not know the content of them. Um, so uh, when we find out, um, I'm sure there will be further communication coming from our industry council out to, um, to the stakeholders to advise you on further on those um, exemptions. Great, thanks. Um, the next question is about um, basically the COVID-19 pandemic um, and how property managers um, 
should be dealing with it really and condo managers um, and how the industry council can help. Well, um, like everybody else, COVID has definitely impacted this part of the, the business because as property managers, you are directly impacted by COVID. Um, you have a duty when you're dealing with your um, tenants, your, your clients to ensure that you are administering the, the property uh, properly and meeting all the government requirements for um, ensuring safety of tenants and, and visitors and, and whatnot. So uh, Rika has actually put up quite a, a good uh, set of tools on the website with respect to, to COVID-19. So if you haven't had uh, the opportunity to review that yet, please, please do so. But it is um, a case of, and in many cases anyway, common sense, uh, ensuring that you've thought about the things that you uh, would put on your list as risks related to COVID-19 and that you are talking with uh, landlords or, or your clients about um, ensuring that they understand that what, what your responsibilities are and what their responsibilities are, at least until we get through this, uh, this COVID uh, cycle. So hope that helps. Great. Um, so the next question basically is um, about, enf about enforcement, which you talked about. Um, how, how, how does the public um, let Rika know about concerns? So I think we've mentioned there are uh, several ways that people can can uh, reach out if they have, have a concern. And I guess it depends in part on defining what is the concern. So if it's about something that uh, somebody else has done, then obviously that's something that would be brought forward, uh, should be brought forward directly to uh, Tarika through either online or, or a call in. Uh, we also do take written complaints if, uh, if there's facts that need to be made known. And if we uh, decide that there needs to be an investigation conducted, then we have also through the RECA staff have the capacity to do that. So if it's a, if it's a question just to, to satisfy somebody's curiosity, then that, that's best probably handled just by a, an email or a call. But depending on the severity of it, we can certainly escalate and make sure that we, we respond appropriately. Yes, uh, thank you. And I'll, I'll add on to that, that Rika's website has uh, an entire section to deal with, um, with complaints and discipline. Um, if you go to rika.ca and go to the complaints uh, menu, you see a full explanation for how you can, how you can make a complaint and what instances um, allow you to make a complaint. So um, tons of information on there that people can, uh, can, can go have a look at. All right, um, next question. Um, will there be regulations on how many properties one manager can work? Hmm. So Don, do you have a sense on this one? Uh, sure, Mr. Chair. Um, currently, the uh, Industry Council and, and the RECA Board is working through um, what we're looking at is the minimum service agreement um, requirements. So there's going to be standards in uh, what condominium managers uh, have in their agreement with their condominium properties. Uh, it's not RECA's role to govern the business model. So um, you know, every property is different. Every, uh, every business model is different. Um, and so as long as the property management company is meeting the terms of their agreement and staying within the licensing parameters, then that would be up to that individual company to, uh, uh, to set their own business model as to how many properties and, and how they do it, how many assistants they have and admin staff and that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, um, the service agreement between property managers and, and condo uh, condominiums will always have a termination agreement. And so if you're not doing your job, your condominium is going to have the right to terminate you and, and move to somebody that will. So we feel with the education 
and uh, the minimum service uh, requirements that it should cover that to provide a more professional image and professional response to condominiums. Great, thanks. Um, next question is what, what is the council's view on warnings and education and discipline versus punitive measures? So I'll try that one. Um, as I mentioned, we've actually already had to deal with a couple of situations where um, action was required. As a first um, step, I think the RECA philosophy and, and our council philosophy is we, we prefer uh, that people obviously follow the rules uh, voluntarily and to the extent that uh, either out of ignorance or perhaps uh, uh, just forgot uh, that if we can educate uh, first that it would be our preference but being uh, in the, the role that we are, where we are, where we do have a public interest mandate, uh, if we have to, then we will um, escalate the extent of response so to, to and including uh, taking somebody's license away if, if that's the, the only answer. But as I say, they, I think the management team would refer to, to it as a, as a right touch approach. And uh, if we can get to that, Love, get um, back to the individual in question uh, being in compliance without having to take enforcement action. I think that that would be our preference. Great, thanks. Uh, next question is, um, you know, there's a lot of condo managers out there who are not licensed um, with RICA yet as property managers uh, who may not even know that RICA is a thing or that there's going to be licensing of condominium managers in the near future. How will RICA reach out to these people and facilitate them uh, to becoming licensed? Carrie, do you want to try that one? Yeah, um, so I know that RICA has been working very hard to identify the um, uh, condo management firms out there that are not licensed. Uh, it's been an ongoing process um, that has started um, several years ago, my understanding is, and uh, they've got a pretty comprehensive list. Um, what I can say is, you know, within the associations out there, um, you know, if there is um, an opportunity um, to be able to, you know, promote to your, through your associations, that firms should be getting in touch with RECA to become registered so that they can get updates. I know there is some social media um, stuff that RECA does. So there will, be, there will be pushes out to the industry and the stakeholders um, through various social media aspects to get the word out there. Um, but the, you know, the associations as well, if you can um, you know, assist by encouraging you know, prop condo managers to get in touch with RECA, that will be very, very helpful. And just to add to, to that, we are also doing outreach to the associations directly to introduce ourselves to, again, facilitate this um, development of the, the list, as Carrie's referred to, to, to try to make sure that we are, are doing our part in, in uh, hope, hopefully educating all the condo managers out there that uh, this licensing requirement is, is imminent. Absolutely. Um, we are, I can say from the communications perspective, we're putting out a lot of, uh, a lot of information out there uh, to the public on social media um, and through um, a list of uh, people who are in the know or know deal with condos and plus dealing with the associations uh, to try and get everyone involved uh, and on board for December 1st. Um, next question, um, really just uh, someone wants to know black and white really, if they already own a property or already have are licensed in property management um, and also have a condo license or a condo management business, um, will they be required to open a separate brokerage under condominium management? Hmm. Uh, Keith, do you wanna speak to that one? 
Well, we're currently still um, looking at competency and eligibility and everything must be approved by the Minister of Service, Alberta. So um, once we have an answer, we'll inform everybody. Thank you. I'm just going through the, uh, the questions coming in here. A uh, question having to do with um, residential versus commercial condos. Um, just really, so commercial condos, miniums, do, do they fall under the purview of this industry council? Um, no. <laughs> we, we, we have, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have identified that there's some uh, crossovers that we are still working our way through in terms of ensuring that it's clear which industry council is, is responsible for which aspects of things. Our, our council is residential property management and condominiums. Thank you. Um, um, has there been any thought about, uh, and there's several questions about this, um, about educating board members? Um, on how to deal with condo managers, basically, going forward. I assume that means condominium board yes. managers? Yes. Uh, Cyril, do you want to try that one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, that, that, that's certainly an important question. And uh, that's something that uh, we as a industry council have discussed in, in past meetings and uh, continue to have. I think that's something that we are going to be looking um, at closer to ensure that um, if there's uh, training, whether it's um, governance or otherwise, that that's going to be in place uh, for those condo boards that uh, so they feel that they are up to, to the task of uh, managing their boards. I think this is a, a shared responsibility there. Uh, obviously, we have uh, our view uh, in our public interest mandate role. Um, Service Alberta may be of assistance here as well in terms of being able to provide some, some guidance. And then uh, the associations may also be somewhere that condo boards could look to from a, a governance and an educational perspective. Uh, great. Next question, um, back to education. They're wondering, um, have we already approached third-party education providers? Um, and let's see here. Oh, and, you know, will, will, will they be virtual classrooms, online class, classrooms, in-person? Has any of that sort of information been decided? Um, Keith or Cyril? Keith, maybe? Yeah, we're working on it right now. And yes, there'll be um, virtual, um, et cetera. We're just coming up with competencies for third party, um, for <clears throat> learner outcomes and for the course providers. So it's in the works right now and we're hoping to um, send them out soon within a couple of weeks so that we can then move forward and then um, meet our deadlines. And I think the intent is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that um, education will be provided by third parties. And from RECA's perspective, any course provider who meets the, the course provider requirements, which include these competencies and learning objectives, uh, learning outcomes that we've uh, been talking about that uh, we're working on, any course provider will be uh, allowed to provide the course because it it's going to be a, a free market activity. So um, as he said, the, the hope and intent is that we can get the communication started with these course providers very soon so because we, we too know that December 1st is coming up fast. Great. Um, and perhaps one of our um... Uh, our industry people on the council can answer this one is, um, let me just, it just jumped on me here. <laughs> uh, is asset management different than property management? Don, do you have a view? 
trying to unmute here. Uh, sorry, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, so it, asset management as it deals directly with uh, maintain, managing and maintaining the infrastructure of a building. Um, if it's not including leasing or uh, any other part of property management is separate and wouldn't require a license. So if you're operating just to help a commercial property uh, or a residential property maintain their equipment and their infrastructure, you would be exempt at that point from requiring a license. If you get into leasing, helping a condo board, that sort of thing, that's when you would, would fall into the licensing category. So hope that's clear. Crystal. Uh, so next question. Um, so will there be a number of third party course providers who will offer the education or will only one be chosen? How is that going to work? Uh, I guess the short answer is we don't know yet because we haven't gone out to the, to the course providers, but our uh, hope would be that they would be more than one option available to people because as I said, it's, uh, it, it should be a free market activity and to the extent that the course providers um, view that there's a, a, a good business reason for them to be able to be, be providing it, that we, we would encourage that. Great. Um, we're getting down uh, to the last few minutes here. So just maybe a couple more questions. Um, just trying to find ones we haven't already answered here. Um, so, has there been any thought about having, a, say, a different sort of license for condominium managers that don't work with trust accounts? Carrie. Um, you know, that is something that we have um, touched on in our discussions, and it will be ongoing. Um, we, we totally understand that there is a big difference when it comes to condominiums having trust accounts versus boards who completely manage their own accounts and the condo management company only does their bookkeeping for them essentially. Um, so we're looking at that, what the final product will be, um, will kind of be determined as we're going through the competencies and the learning outcomes. And um, when the consultation goes out, um, for anybody that has any suggestions on that area, I would suggest that you make sure you uh, put your uh, information in there so that if, you know, we're still very much um, trying to deal with that, we, we, we've got stuff to look at. As, as Carrie said, we, we understand and appreciate that there's a, a, I'll say a fairly wide variety of possible um, structures that the condominium managers could fit into so we're we're trying to understand those and then once we understand what all of all of those might look like then we will be in a better position to talk about how we might view them then from a licensing perspective uh great uh probably the last question here um has to do with uh broker licensing so will there be separate education for brokers of condo management versus just a, an associate. Um, Cyril or Keith, can you touch on that? Here I will. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, we're looking at um, competency and eligibility and then course providers on that. So again, it'll go out to, for everyone to please get back to us on an opinion when we when we finally break that down, which we expect in the next two weeks. Great. Um, I think we're pretty much out of time now. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, if you we didn't get to your question, we will try to answer it um, personally to you afterwards through email. Um, and this session will be available online today, probably. Um, if you had know any people who couldn't make it today, I know there's quite a few who are registered who did not attend. Um, so um, it'll be up as soon as we can uh, get it up and running. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for taking part in stakeholder engagement with the Industry Council. And I will uh, give the final word to you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so I just want to echo that comment. I, I want to thank everybody that took the time to attend today. I, I really want to also thank those that 
uh, ask questions because that helps us a lot because we need to hear from you as to what the issues are that we as the council uh, should be dealing with. We, I gave you a, a list earlier of the things that we're working on. So to the extent that there's other things that you think we should be working on, um, please uh, let me know, let us know. And I also wanna thank my council members and the, the staff that have been uh, so helpful in supporting us through this process. So hope everybody has a good day and I hope a, a good long weekend. And for those of you that have snow on the ground, I hope it melts soon. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks everyone.